students i am ashish badie assistant professor at the government institute of forensic science nagpur today i bring you a learning episode in bsc forensic science on an important unit fingerprint part 4 recording of fingerprints in this we will discuss about the various important methods of recording live fingerprints as well as the fingerprints of the dead we will wind up this episode with an interesting case study let's start our episode with a look at what we are going to learn today module 1 introduction module 2 recording of fingerprints this will include a recording of live fingerprints and recording of post mortem friction ridge module 3 conclusion module 4 case study module 1 introduction fingerprints are the impression of the friction ridges present on the distal phalanges of the fingers and the thumb a fingerprint impression thus obtained is a reverse of the actual print on the skin surface the essential things required to obtain fingerprints include printer's ink paper or card or slip inking slab made up of either metal or glass inking roller or cotton pad alcohol or kerosene or gasoline clean dry cloth and soap for recording purposes two types of impressions may be taken namely plain impression and rolled impression plain impressions in the plain impression the finger are impressed on the slab and then pressed on the paper as such that is without any turning or rolling of the finger in any direction the plain impression is usually devoid of marginal ridges rolled impressions in the rolled impressions the finger is rolled first on the inked slab from nail to nail and then the inked finger is rolled in a similar pattern on the paper this facilitates the recording of the complete pattern along with the marginal ridges as well in routine forensic practices the finger impressions are obtained as rolled impression and not as plain or dab prints in plain or dab prints the pattern is usually not recorded completely while in a roll print the complete pattern along with the marginal ridges are obtained module 2 recording of fingerprints the methods and techniques described here for recording living and post mortem friction ridge detail are appropriate for the vast majority of conditions and circumstances recording of live fingerprint the basic method of recording finger ridge detail on the hands or feet can be accomplished by applying a thin coat of black ink directly to the skin surface using a roller next the inked skin is pressed on a surface of contrasting color such as a white piece of paper or a fingerprint card the difference in elevation between the ridges and the furrows of the friction ridge skin leaves a print that is a recording of the unique detail of the friction ridge skin if using the printer's ink slab and roller method a small amount of ink is deposited at the edge center and opposite edges of a thoroughly cleaned inking plate the ink is then rolled and smoothed out the ink should look black not gray a gray color means that there is not enough ink on the plate the ink should not look wet if the ink looks wet too much ink has been placed on the plate and this could result in a smearing of the print after the proper amount of ink has been rolled onto the plate the next step is to ink the fingers Before any ink is applied to the fingers the fingers must be inspected to ensure that they are clean and dry because contaminants can interfere with proper recording if the subject's fingers are too dry a moisturizing hand lotion may be applied sparingly to soften the fingers if the subject's fingers are too moist they must be dried individually or in case of excess moisture wiped with an alcohol wipe and then dried regardless of what method of recording is used 
the fingers should be rolled away from the body and the thumbs should be rolled towards the body. This procedure allows the fingers and the thumbs to be rolled from an awkward position to a more relaxed position and is less likely to produce smeared recordings. To completely roll each finger with the subject standing in front of and facing the card holder, the hand should be firmly grasped in such a manner that the finger is extended and the other fingers are out of the way. The inking plate and the card holder should be side by side with the card holder nearest the operator. For best results, the subject should not help with the process and should be asked to remain in a relaxed posture. The finger or thumb is then rotated 180 degree, that is nail edge to nail edge and is immediately lifted from the plate and rolled in the same manner in the appropriate box on the fingerprint card that has been previously placed in the card holder. Unless unmarked film surface is available for further impressions, the inking slab must be rolled again to prepare a thin film of ink with the inking roller. If two impressions are obtained successively from the same area of the inking slab, the subsequent impression will be unevenly inked. During the printing, the subject should remain relaxed, allowing the operator complete freedom in the manipulations of the fingers for obtaining a better quality finger impression. Prints thus obtained should be examined on the spot then and there itself so as to ascertain that the impressions are complete and clear. In case of an incomplete or undecipherable impression, another clear impression should be taken immediately after cleaning and re-inking the particular finger. Stamp pad or inkless pads or self-inking pads may also be used for taking finger impressions on the fingerprint card or slip or paper. It is the most common and preferred method for taking fingerprint impressions in various offices, codes, etc. And the popular type is taking plain impressions. Although it is not advisable to take thumb impressions using a stamp pad for forensic purposes, since they are not as clear as the ones taken with the printer's ink and roller method. At times, these are totally or partially blurred, smudged or too faint or too dark for comparison. However, if there is no alternative other than the use of stamp pad, the following may be remembered to ensure good prints. Do not use new stamp pad because the pattern of the cloth covering the cushion of the stamp pad may result in net like formation in the impressions rendering it unfit for comparison. Black stamp pad ink must be used as they produce impressions with better contrast with the background that is paper. The commonly used violet colored stamp pad ink on brownish or dull colored papers or on revenue stamps results in impressions of poor contrast with backgrounds and causes difficulties in comparison. Do not allow the subject to rub his thumb or fingers on stamp pad because to and fro movements of the thumb on the pad may result in filling of ink in the furrows causing smudging in the impressions. Do not use an over inked stamp pad because the thumb impressions with over inked pad may be smudged. General precautions to be taken while recording fingerprints. The hands of the subject must be properly cleaned and wiped so that they are free from excessive oil or dirt or any attempt to obliterate the finger impressions must be checked. Students, in some movies or serials, you would have seen the culprit try to obliterate his fingerprints by applying wax or dirt to them just before recording. Excessive pressure should not be applied on the fingers during rolling. Lab and the roller must be clean and free from dust. Overinking should be avoided. To obtain better quality prints, care should be taken to see that too much ink is not used. The fingers should not be rolled over the same part of the slab until it is re-rolled with the ink again. Insufficient inking of fingers result in extra light prints which are extremely faint and the important characteristics may not be printed properly. The slab should be placed at a sufficient height to allow the subject's forearm to assume a horizontal position when the fingers are being inked. The ink film on the slab should be controlled properly by cross rolling. The impression should be recorded with the tip of the finger pointing to the top of the fingerprint slip or card. The rolled impressions of each finger should be obtained in the designated space for that finger in the fingerprint slip or fingerprint card. 
if a particular finger is missing or is so defective or deformed that it is not possible to obtain an impression, this fact must be noted in the space allotted for that particular finger. In case of double fingers, the prints of both the fingers shall be obtained. If it is not possible to do so, the print of the more prominent of the two fingers should be obtained. Deformities on the fingers like cut marks, scars, burns, boils, etc. shall be fully described and it should also be noted whether they are temporary or permanent in nature. The fingerprints of such persons who are suffering from any kind of disease affecting the skin and or may be infectious must not be taken, that is, in cases of leprosy, etc. Recording of Postmortem Friction Ridge One of the most challenging and also rewarding aspect of latent print examination is the determination of the identity of deceased individuals. Various methods and techniques may be used to facilitate the successful recording and preservation of postmortem friction ridge details. In circumstances involving unknown deceased infants, it is often necessary to obtain postmortem footprints because hospital personnel usually record only footprint standards of newborn babies. When decomposition, desiccation, or maceration of the friction ridge skin precludes satisfactory recording with traditional methods, the hands, fingers, or feet of the deceased may be surgically removed by a medical examiner and submitted to a laboratory where advanced procedures may be conducted. General recording of recently deceased subjects. If the hands are in reasonably good condition, obtaining satisfactory recordings of the friction ridge detail from the fingers is usually accomplished by straightening the fingers and flattening the palm. To facilitate this process, the deceased should be positioned with the face and palms down on a table, that is, a prone position. The fingers and palms should be cleaned and dried. If rigor mortis has set in, it is possible to break the rigor by forcibly straightening the digits, which can then be recorded by using equipment intended for the purpose. Recording decomposed friction ridge skin. Putrefied skin is fragile. Such putrefaction is usually a result of various biological factors such as bacteria, fungi, or fermentation. A 10 to 15 percent soaking solution of formaldehyde may be used in extreme cases to firm up the skin to facilitate this process. Formaldehyde, however, can cause the skin to become very firm and brittle, causing the skin to split. The skin should be soaked for an hour or so until it is sufficiently firm. Once hardened, the friction ridge skin should be removed, pat dried and recorded. Another similar method suggests soaking the fingers or friction skin in 10% formaldehyde solution for several hours. The skin is then rinsed gently with running water, rinsed in laboratory quality isopropanol to remove any excess moisture, patted dry and recorded as previously described. Recording macerated friction ridge skin. Maceration occurs when friction ridge skin is immersed usually in water for an extended period of time. The epidermal layer absorbs water, often swells and can loosen from the dermis within a few hours after immersion. If the friction ridge skin is not too badly damaged, the skin should be carefully cleaned, wiped with alcohol and recorded as previously described for recently deceased subjects. If the skin has separated from the dermal layer and is wrinkled, it may be possible to pull the skin from the back of the finger to smooth out the pattern area by pinching the skin tightly. This will facilitate inking and recording. In such instances, when the skin is wrinkled but not pliable, thus not allowing the skin to be stretched smoothly across the pattern area, tissue builder or glycerin may be injected into the bulbs of the finger to round out the pattern area. Recording charred friction ridge skin. On occasions, it may be necessary to obtain recordings of friction ridge detail that has been subjected to intense fire. Charring of the skin can occur, producing very brittle, often easily destroyed skin. Care must be exercised not to destroy the epidermal layers of the friction ridge skin should removal of the hands or feet becomes necessary. As a worst case scenario for severely charred skin, Photography of any discernible friction ridge detail using oblique lighting may be the only method 
that will produce satisfactory results. The correct procedure to record friction ridge detail that has been subjected to desiccation and charring will be determined by the level of destruction to the friction ridge skin. Fortunately, in some cases, the friction ridge skin on the fingers and the palms is somewhat protected by the tightening of the flexor muscles, ligaments and tendons in the hands and arms which as a result of intense heat draws the fingers into a tightly clenched fist or puglistic attitude. Intense heat also tends to cause a separation of the epidermal layer from the dermal layer of the friction ridge skin. One method involves completing the separation of the epidermal layer from the dermal layer of the skin through refrigeration. To facilitate inking and recording, an ink roller is used to deposit a thin coat of ink onto the pattern of the skin. The skin is then flipped over and rolled on the back side, recording the friction ridge detail on a standard card. Conclusion Obtaining legible recordings of these areas of skin is crucial for subsequent comparisons to latent impressions recovered from scene of crime, for comparisons against previous records and for input into automated fingerprint identification systems. The methods and techniques described above for recording living and postmortem friction ridge details are appropriate for the vast majority of conditions and circumstances. However, it is possible that an unusual circumstance will arise that may require extra patience and skill to achieve the most desirable results. Quality recordings from live subjects are usually not too difficult to obtain as long as the subject is cooperative. Recording postmortem friction ridge detail, however, may become more of a challenge because of the varying conditions of the friction ridge skin. Case study Let's wind it up with an interesting case study. John Dillinger, one of the most notorious criminals in American history, was often glorified by the American media for his daring bank robberies and thrilling prison escapes. Dillinger's career as a criminal include over 11 bank robberies throughout the Midwest in which he stole in excess of 3 lakh dollars and 3 separate jail breaks. The mystique surrounding Dillinger's exploits was so captivating that people often forgot that he was responsible for at least 10 murders including that of a sheriff, the deaths of several innocent bystanders and that he left a trail of carnage in his wake. Dillinger's activities, however, did not go unnoticed by Chief Investigator Melvin Purvis of the FBI, who was assigned to the task of bringing Dillinger and his gang to justice. When J. Edgar Hoover and the FBI named Dillinger the first public enemy number one on his 31st birthday in 1934, his fame took on a new meaning and his name and face became recognizable in every household throughout the Midwest and the rest of the country. There was even a $10,000 reward for his capture. Now a public figure, Dillinger turned to plastic surgery to alter his identity and evade Melvin Purvis and the rest of the law enforcement community. In those days, plastic surgery was not as common as it is today and the medical procedures were primitive, dangerous, time consuming and very painful. Dillinger underwent several bouts of plastic surgery, some more successful than others. But in the end, he only managed to slightly alter his appearance. After one round of plastic surgery, from which he was extremely disappointed to find that he still looked the same, one of the doctors suggested that he remove his fingerprints as a way to escape being detected. Dillinger liked this idea and elected to undergo the painful process of obliterating his fingerprints. Dillinger was not the first criminal to come up with that idea. In 1933, handsome Jack Kultas has attempted to file down the small ridges on his fingers, but he ultimately failed. Two of Kate Ma Barker's clan, Elvin Creepy Carpus and Ma's son, Freddy, decided to remove their fingerprints as well. So they hired mob physician Joseph P. Moran to do the job. Moran was inexperienced in this procedure and repeatedly hacked and knived at their prints until the gangsters couldn't bear any more pain. But when their fingers finally healed, the fingerprint ridges grew back to their original patterns. Hoover was aware of this trend among criminals and he became wary of the possibility of success. 
he commissioned several surgeons and dermatologists to report on the likelihood of someone obliterating their fingerprints and in 1934 they came back with their findings dr howard l abdigraf a member of that committee had extensive experience in the area of fingerprint alterations and he reported that the only way to permanently obliterate a fingerprint is to graft skin from another part of the body over them. And in 1941, that's exactly what Robert Phillips did when he got a doctor to graft the skin from his chest onto the tips of his fingers. Phillips, however, was caught because the ridges surrounding the graft area as well as on the other joints of his fingers were used to identify him. Dillinger seemed to have taken the road less traveled when he chose acid to burn the tip of his fingers with in late May 1934. The procedure appeared to be successful. However, faint ridge markings were still visible on his fingertips after the full healing process as were seen after Dillinger's death. Many people in history have attempted to elude the authorities by scarring or ruining their fingerprints, but forensics has been able to keep up with those criminals all the while. In fact, as Phillips found out firsthand, just ruining the tips of one's fingers does not preclude fingerprint identification. The ridges that are found on the tips of one's fingers are also found on the entire surface of the palm and they are just as unique to an individual. Furthermore, by introducing scars onto one's fingers, it makes the identification process even easier since the scar patterns are unique and are less common to the general population. If one thing can be learned from Dillinger and the other notorious outlaws of the gangster era, it's that crime does not pay and eventually criminals will be brought to justice and not always the pretty way. Dear students, I hope you have enjoyed the contents of this episode. I would really appreciate it if you guys try to practice what you learn after each episode. It is quite easy and fun to do. Just buy or borrow a stamp pad, some plain paper and a magnifying glass and you are ready to enter into the fingerprint world.